You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. This is June the 24th, 2019. With you today is myself, Carl, and Stevie Nick. Am I ever proud to be a Stevie today, Carl? Yeah? What's got you? What's got your fancy tickle today? I don't know. Just the fact that he's running the team. Yeah? You're happy? I'm, I'm happy. Okay. You know, you, I know we're going to get into the draft, but... What, sitting through that first round, first of all, was brutal, and we can talk about that later. But the first five picks, and everybody goes up, and they're like, I'd like to thank the city of wherever we are for their hospitality. Took forever to make their pick. And then Iserman gets on, and he's just like, the Red Wings pick Moritz Cider, or whatever the guy's name is. Moritz Cider. Boom. Done. Love him. Yeah, he's, he wasn't messing around. Love him. So and we'll we'll get to that. So lots of draft talk today. We got some trades to talk about. That's been happening. Uh, we'll prep for maybe we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, well, I guess the trades are relevant for free agency. That gets happening in a week from today. Uh, there are some rule changes that happen. If there's time, we might talk about the awards because that also happened since we were last year. It's a busy time of the month. It's a very busy week for the NHL. Yeah. So let's get uh, let's. Let's get to it. Before we get to any of that, remind everyone about Park Power, one of the official sponsors of the Alberta Podcast Network. Go to parkpower.ca and you can find out there how they can help you with your electricity and energy needs. Uh, What I love about Park Power is that they support your community because they support initiatives and charities in your community. And that is a fantastic thing that anyone should be doing. Uh, And I love that you can do that with your energy bill. So uh, head to parkpower.ca and find out more. The draft, Nick. The NHL draft. It's too long, don't you think? That was a lengthy evening. Yeah. For a Friday night, the first round went on for way too long. Everyone gets their time to shine. You know, you, you get up there, you got your pictures, you've got all of that. You've got your time on the clock. You've got even the pregame, right? Because they're like, it starts at this time. And doesn't start at that time. Never. It never yeah. starts on time. No. Uh, and so, yeah, you've got, it took, it was a long while until we got, cause it was what eight o'clock your time it, until it started. Yeah. And I don't think it finished till like after 11. Yeah. That's long. I it mean, long. Gr- granted it was in Vancouver. So like for them, it starts at five. So that, that's, uh, you know, what you get when it's on the West coast, but yeah, a long night. Um, but for some teams, a good night for some teams, a bad night. Is there any team that stands out to you as having the best draft? And I know, obviously, it went over two days. Day two, it's shocking. You turn in to watch the coverage on day two, and you're like, you blink and you miss three picks. I know, it's so true. You can't keep up. No. Uh, Who had the best draft? Uh, Probably the New Jersey Devils, no? I mean... They're the obvious choice. They're an obvious choice, right? They got the best player available. Um, Yeah. And they made a pretty big trade on day two. That's true. That was yeah, on day two. Going. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's look at just pure draft. Pure draft. So on players chosen. Let's start there. Because yeah, the Devils had one doozy of a weekend. They had a devil of a weekend. Hey, nice. Um who had the best draft? I mean, I don't know. I know that I could maybe make a call based on the first round, but as we've discussed before, I'm not a huge draft or prospect guy, so it's tough for me to judge on the on the whole draft. I think the Avalanche did pretty well for themselves, not only because they chose twice, but because of who they chose first. Um, I think I think Florida made a really interesting first round pick, especially based on the rumors that are floating around free agency with them right now. Yeah. Yeah. Spencer Knight, for those who uh, don't have the old draft board pulled up, Spencer Knight, uh, goalie from the U S development program went 13th overall to Florida with, yeah. with Bobrovsky literally in town right now meeting with the team. Yeah. And I know goalies are weird and you can't predict their development, but this Spencer Knight kid's been 
very, very highly hyped for this draft. Yeah. I was I was actually surprised how high he went. I was expecting like a late first for yeah, him. Yeah, me too. Which like, again, a lot of those teams at the bottom. I get, you know, Buffalo was drafted at the bottom. Anaheim had a pick at the bottom. Uh, Carolina certainly could have picked him at the bottom. So there were teams, Calgary. I mean, I take it back. Every team at the bottom should have picked Spencer Knight as well. Um, but he didn't get there. Well, I mean, Colorado could have taken him at 16. Yeah, and that wouldn't have been a bad pick either. I would have been, have been a bad pick. No. Um, yeah, it, I mean, if, if he pans out, if, if any goalie picked in the first round becomes a bona fide starter, like I'm thinking like top 15 goalie in the league, he's worth the first round pick. 100%. 100%. And I think it will pan out. It's just interesting because if they're going to sign Bobrovsky to a seven-year deal, are they thinking that Spencer Knight is seven years away from being a starting goalie? I mean, that's a, if, if they think that, that's a terrible first round pick. <laughs> right. So I like, I don't, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but does that maybe mean that Bobrovsky to Florida isn't as confirmed as everyone's saying it is? Or maybe, maybe they've already, they'd already talked about short, right? That could, yeah. be, uh, could be the approach that they're taking there, uh, going a shorter deal with him. Who knows? Yeah, I do think that the biggest steal, like the best pick of the first round, was Montreal getting Cole Caulfield at 15. I was, you, you talk about Colorado picking at 16. He's sitting there on the board and I'm getting real excited. Yeah. Right? I mean, Newhook's not a bad pick, but Caulfield, like, he's a big time scorer. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was surprised that they didn't go Krebs, but we've seen Joe Sackick have a love for the BCHL before. Uh, Tyson Yost came out of there as well. Um, and even, I guess, well, not, I guess, uh, Kale McCarr, he was drafted out of the AJHL. So these non-traditional junior leagues, uh, turns out the Avs are, uh, willing to take those players. For what it's worth, Cameron Kuam of wingsnation.com had Alex Newhook very highly rated. It's worth enough to me. So I think they did. I think they did pretty well. I mean, they, it would have been a great pick either way. Krebs would have been great for them too. Yeah, Kreb, I mean, there's there's lots of great players um, in that. You know, the, the top of that draft was very good. Uh, that yeah. said, thrilled beyond belief that they got Bo and Byron at four. So, so thank you, Chicago. So let's go to the top for a minute, okay? Jack Hughes and Capo Caco, no surprise there. Yeah. Even though New Jersey took a very long time to get on stage. I was like, what are the, de- why are the devils taking so long to get on stage and make this pick? This should be the fastest one of the draft. Yeah. But anyways, they took a long time, but Jack Hughes, Capo Caco, were you surprised by Kirby doc at number three? I was a little bit. Cause mostly because I would have taken, I would have taken Alex Turcott or Bo and Byram over him. Same. And I think if I'm Chicago, I, I'm shocked they didn't take Bo and Byram. Yeah. Anyway, you talk, you know, they have great defensive prospects in Chicago. Don't get me wrong. But you can't have too many. Colorado proved it just in this draft, right? Yeah. They've got Sam Gerard, Cal McCarr, uh, and now Bo and Byram to add to that. Uh, it makes, you know, the Tyson Berry rumors even stronger because you're like, well, he's expendable now. You can trade that. And we've seen, you know, the run on defensemen this draft saw. Uh, everyone was wanting that. Yeah, the the defense in the first round ended up being really interesting. But I was shocked Colorado took Byram too. I thought they would have took taken Turcott over him. Yeah, I I was thrilled with it. Uh I wouldn't have been sad with either pick. So that that was that was my thought. Uh I would kind of assumed that Chicago would take Byram, but when you can take the best at their position, uh you got to do it. Yeah, I agree. And well, it was I, like it's, it's it's further proof that you know, one and two were solidified and three to 12 basically were interchangeable. Every cool. team, like somebody else. Well, three to 15, right? Cole Caulfield dropping all the way to Montreal. Yeah. There was no one that was a lock anywhere. No. I mean, did you see Cam York going at 14 to Philadelphia? Like there's some, I thought he would have been way lower, but. Yeah. So once the, once the D started going, everyone started taking their D. They're like, yeah, we, we need it. And so. We got Alex Turcotte, eventually did go five to yep. Carolina, and then... Five to Los Angeles. Five to Los Angeles, my bad. Uh, you are correct. I don't know why I thought Carolina. Um, and then you're, 
your Red Wings really got the run on defensemen going. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think it was probably the shock of the first round. Uh, I would agree. Yeah. As a, as an unbiased outsider, a little confused. I- explain to me the more it's cider, cedar, cedar, cider, cider, C- cider. Like, the, like the drink, like the drink. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we were all shocked, especially with Dylan Cousins and Trevor Zegras and Pod Colson still on the board. I think, um, you know, people thought the centers were going to go first. And also, I think on a lot of boards, Philip Broberg was rated higher than Moritz Sider. But Detroit had their guy. They like him. He's a big guy. Um, he hasn't been a big goal scorer, but he is playing in the top professional German uh, hockey league with men. And a lot of those men are former AHL and NHL players. So he's playing against tough competition. He plays a really good defensive game. Um, he's a great passer. He sees the ice really well. And that's what Detroit liked about him. Also that he's super competitive. They liked his compete level. Hmm. So he was their guy. They were going to take him in the first round, you know, whether they drafted at six or 10, They did admit they tried moving down. They couldn't get the value that they wanted, so they picked their guy. Well, and and that was going to be my follow-up, right? Because trading down, uh, you could swap, you know, if if Edmonton wanted to go D with Broberg at H, you could try to move down there. Uh, Arizona, Philly, you know, all these teams that took defensemen, uh, you got to wonder, would he have been available there? Impossible to know, and obviously wasn't good enough for Eiserman. Well, I think Detroit probably had some intel that Ken Holland and the Oilers were looking pretty hard at him. I mean, if you think about if it's the Red Wings scouting team that were saying, look, this is the guy, we need to grab him, they were probably saying that to Ken Holland two months ago. <laughs> it's true, yeah. they He knew what the Red Wings' play was there. He knew what their play was, and they... They had intel that there was he probably wasn't going to make it out of the top ten. So, yeah, I don't know. I never blame teams for picking their guy. Same with Chicago with Kirby Doc. Like he he was their guy. They were going to take him. Yeah, you got to trust your your staff. Yeah, and the you know when you have that pick, you've done enough work, right? You know for some time that you're going to make that pick. It's not. Uh, and especially Chicago, right? They're like, well, we know. Same with, you know, all of those teams at the top. You've got your order, you've got your draft board, and you just pick off of it. So yep, that's it. Don't uh don't get too shocked when something happens. Just go with what you go with what you decided. So um the one pick, and I was I was actually surprised that he dropped uh even one more pick. I figured, you know, give the Ottawa centers enough time and they'll be able to figure that out. Um but Arthur Kaliev dropping to thirty three. Uh, you know, with, with the amount of defensemen going in that first round, a little surprising, but LA Kings had themselves a heck of a draft with Turcotte and him. That's yeah. Cool. I was really hoping Kaliev was going to fall two more spots. Yeah. Um, that I, I'm sure you would have. <laughs> sure <you would've. laughs> yeah. That's a good pickup for LA, especially in the second round. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very reminiscent of when Debrinket fell in the second round to Chicago. Yeah, years back. Uh, that's that was a, a, another one, right? Um, one thing that you know we saw a goalie go in the first round, uh, two more go in the second round, or three rather go in the second round, um, and one of them is went to Ottawa. And I actually, as much as I didn't like a lot of what Ottawa did in this draft, you know, you don't, you don't have a first round; it's going to be a, a bad draft, anyways. Um, yeah. But they picked Matt Sogard. Uh, playing with the Medicine Hat Tigers, and that's an interesting pick because he's he's one of those giant goalies. He's six seven, and uh, and so you've got him there. Uh, a, a really up and down season in the WHL. Uh, there's there was a, a lot. There was I think three WHL goalies drafted this year, and you know two of them that I know of smaller, him less so, uh, but up and down. If he can sort it out in Medicine Hat this season, that'll be a a nice pick for the Senators. They, they, I mean, they're going to need help at that position very soon. They're one of those. The, I don't know if you watched the NBA draft, but there was a a ticker that said what every team's need was, and the New York Knicks said everything. 
uh, that would be the Ottawa Center. <laughs> No. Actually, they do that at the who who decides what their needs are. Uh, ESPN, like just the the broadcaster doing it, and it's just and it's like it's like a live physical piece at the draft. Uh, no, I think oh, it, it's, on, it's just on the broadcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I no, that, like I mean that'd be screen. great though. Yeah, just as you're walking up, needs everything. <laughs> uh, well, guys, what do we do here? It says everything. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Eisner actually had a similar quote where they asked him if like he was picking best player available or best. Or, or for a positional need. And he was like, no matter what we drafted would have been a positional need. <laughs> like every yeah. player, we need help everywhere. He was on fire with the media this weekend. Oh, he was great. Yeah. He was great. He, uh, when he was a player, he was always so like shy and reserved and he always seemed nervous in front of the cameras. He's really loosened up. It's nice to see. Yeah, he did himself a great, uh, a great little weekend there. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, a, a highly questioned weekend as well obviously with the the cider pick but yeah i mean and the rest of the picks too he um he he's doing his thing man that's what they brought him in for well and i i tried i didn't have a chance to go back and and fully explore it um but he had good picks when he was in tampa um so he knows how to either build you know, build that scouting staff. Obviously, this wasn't the scouting staff of his, and he nope. wasn't in that circle for the year. And so he really was trusting his staff. Tell me this, and then we'll make a decision. Uh, you would probably know this better than me, but I, f- I feel like it was a very a gr- more of a group decision this year than in Yeah, North. I would think so. I mean, the other thing, too, is he got to watch a lot of um, prospects play this year because of his reduced role with Tampa. So I think he did a lot. He had a lot more time for scouting and watching hockey and watching young guys playing. Um, so it's not like he went into it and was like, "Hey guys, tell me what you think about all these players." He had his own opinions too. Yeah, he also he also played a lot of video games. He's pretty, I I would think so. Yeah, pretty good at the old Fortnite now. Um, <laughs> any other any other thoughts on the draft from the the week? I we'll we'll get into the the deals that happened on day two. I was yeah. disappointed on the lack of day one deals. I was too, but I think the first round pick is so coveted these days, man. Like everyone's too afraid to part with them. Well, not Toronto, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, the Leafs are bold. It's a new era in Toronto. They're getting, they're getting creative there. Um, yeah. I mean, Ontario, I guess. Just the province of Ontario hates first round picks. That's what we've learned this weekend. Yeah, either for very good reasons or for very bad reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I w- that was the only thing that I was really disappointed. There was so much talk of players moving, and they still might before free agency gets going, but um, nothing nothing really happened that day. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many more trades we're going to see at this point. I think we saw, we saw most of them. Yeah, I would think so. But, but you want to play a game, Carl? Yeah, I, I love games. Okay. I, I, I was thinking about the draft and um, there was something like 220 players drafted from 15 yeah. different countries. There are so many, so many players drafted in such a small amount of time. There's so many names thrown around. So I, I came up with this quick game for us to play where I'm going to say two names and you have to tell me which one is a legitimate NHL draft pick from the weekend. And which one is a made up name? Okay. Um, can I get, if, if I get it right, can I get a bonus point if I pick the country they're from? Yeah. We'll do the country, whether you get it right or wrong. Okay. Nice. So I'm, I've got six points on the line here, or I guess I don't know how many we're doing. I don't know why I assumed three. I've I don't know. I question. I made up a bunch of names. Okay. Here let's, we go. Let's, let's go for it. Okay. So the first one is um, Isaiah Saville or Trent Ryder? Ooh. Uh, I will go Isaiah Saville or Trent Ryder. Those are both very... I feel like Trent Ryder's a little too on the nose. They both seem very good, but Trent Ryder seems like a name that you worked hard to make up. I'm going Isaiah as the guy. Isaiah is the real draft pick. All right, Isaiah Isaiah Saville. Saville, S A V I L L E. He was a fifth round pick 
for Vegas? I will go with Isaiah Saville. I, I would say it's Seville, and I would say he's American. You are correct, at least about the American part. Yeah. There I we can't go. tell you how to pronounce his name, yeah, though. That's as good a guess as any. Yeah, one day we might find out. But he's a fifth round pick, so probably not. So that's two points already for you. I'm two for two. Good job. Uh, okay, next up, we've got Gustav Berglund mm-hmm. or Yarmo Tuomomitu. So I feel like Gustav Berglund sounds like a mashup of two already existing NHL players. Hmm. So I'm going with, what was my other option? Yarmo Tuomo Me Too. That also sounds like a mashup. I'm going Tuomo Me Too is the real one. That's false. Ooh. Gustav Berglund was drafted sixth round. Oh, by the Detroit Red Wings. There you go. <laughs> we he's know, a defenseman. We're learning something new about the Red Wings draft. Yeah, there you go. Where do you think he's from? Uh, Sweden. Yeah, you're correct. There we go. How about Yarmo Tuomo Me Too, though? It's not a bad Finnish made up name, right? Very good Finnish made up name. Yeah. I mean, I I almost felt bad. I was like, Nick is really bad at making these super obvious <laughs> with with the uh, Gustav Berglund, but that's real. Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself for I that was, name. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. How did you spell it, by the way? Tuomo Me Too. Tuomo Me Too. Yeah. T U O M O M I T O O. It, pr- it would probably be O-U at the end in reality. And I think it would have back-to-back eyes. Oh, yeah. You're right. There would definitely be the double eyes. Yeah. I, I just think we need to add just double the amount of vowels in that name, and you probably spelled it right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, next I'm name? Three for four. You're three for four. Okay, so next we've got Anatoly Anatoski or Matthew Hill. Matthew Hill, just so you know, I did get distracted because the trade just happened. Uh, so we'll get to that very, very shortly. Oh, right in a second? Like just now, yeah. Um, so Matthew Hill, and what was the first one? Anatoly Anatoski. Uh, Anatoly Anatoski is real. No, false. It's made up. Dang it. Matthew, Matthew Hill. Hill is a sixth round draft pick for the Anaheim Ducks. He's a defenseman. There we go. Where do you think he's from? Canada. Canada, you're right. I know my I know my countries. I, I mean, I don't know if they're real or fake names, but I know <laughs> where they're from. <laughs> oh, I had a lot of okay. Let's do one more, and then we'll talk about that trade because I just saw the notification, and it's a pretty big one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, after what two seconds ago, I don't think there's any more trades. Also, <laughs> the got traded. It's a trade. I'm wrong. Uh, okay, last one. We've got Valtteri Pustinen. That's a fake name if I ever saw one. And we've got Braden Deadmarsh. Well, you have you have mashup again on me. Pustin is real. Yeah, you're right. There we go. I'm, Seventh round pick to Pittsburgh. There we go. So okay, and Pustin in. Uh check. He's finished. Mm. So how many points did I get there? One on that one. I, Oh, total? Five out of a possible eight points? Yeah, it's not bad. It's a pass. Yeah, it is a pass. That's all we, that's all we want. It's hard. There's some hard names in this draft. Um, I mean, like, once you get past the first round, they all sound made up to me. They all, yeah. Like, okay, here's, here's what we'll do right now. I'm going to play one. Okay. And uh, how are we going to do this? Okay, I'm going to give you four names. Okay. Three of them are real. You pick the fake one. And Three of them are real. Okay. All from 200th or higher in the draft. Okay. I just scrolled all the way to the top, so I can't cheat. Okay, here we go. Raphael Harvey Pinard. Okay. Cole Koski. Okay. Tyler Rizzo. Or... McCade Webster. 
McCade is his first name. <laughs> his first name is McCade. Yes, that is what I said. Oh, poor kid. Um, Unless that's the fake one. I feel like McCade is a pretty crazy name to just pull out of thin air. I'm going to say... Oh, it's not the first one because you wouldn't make up three names just to trick me. Cole Koski. I'm going to say Tyler Rizzo is the fake one. Yeah, that is a mashup of Tyler Angle and Massimo Rizzo. You mashed up two real names? <laughs> I mashed up two real names to get the fake one, yeah. Trickery. <laughs> okay, McCade Webster. Who the heck did McCade that? Webster, that is a, uh, he's from Green Bay. Went to the Tampa Bay Lightning, 213th overall. Huh, I would not have thought to spell his name like that. M-C-K-A-D-E, yeah, McCade. I mean, he's born in St. Louis. He's going to be a winner in the future, so. <laughs> It'll just right. take him so let's get to Let's get to some trades because we have a brand new one. Do we want to start? I haven't actually seen, I've been so into this game, I haven't even seen the return. I just know that Calvin DeHaan is a now a member of the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah, so according to uh, our favorite phone app, which put, sent me a push notification, Chicago gets Calvin DeHaan and Alexi Sarella. Don't know who that is. Carolina gets Anton Forsberg and Gustav Forsling. Now, which one of those names is made up? Uh, I know Anton Forsberg. I'm just is kidding. Real. They're all real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, so Chicago needs somebody right defensemen are good Calvin DeHaan's a, a good little defenseman um they you know also they added Ole Mata this offseason um and Anton Forsberg uh, for a team in Carolina just grasping at straws for goaltenders it's a solid little flyer for me that's my uh, initial thoughts does that mean that Peter Mrazek is done in Carolina well, I, they've been trying to reach a deal with him for the last two weeks, and they haven't been able to. Yeah, the guy's tough to reach deals with. Like, I, I feel like if he wanted to stay or they wanted – I don't know. I know they want him to stay, but if they could reach a, agreeable terms, they would have already. So, it, they, so they'll be running then with Scott Darling and Anton Forsberg. Well, not Scott Darling. Scott Darling's, uh, he's, he's, he's not exactly NHL in the NHL right now. Did he get demoted? Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's currently trying to rework his, uh, his bounce back. Huh. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I'm actually, I believe that, uh, I'm, well, I know he was waived at some point this season and, and cleared waivers. Um, Oh, maybe I, I remember bio, that. Bio period has ended, so I think they're just going to try to bury him. Yeah, well, but, they're certainly not buying him out. They missed that window. Yeah. So Anton Forsberg, 35 games for the Chicago Blackhawks last season, nine zero eight save percentage. I mean, two point nine seven goals against. That seems pretty good. That's that's better than any goalie in Carolina did last year. It's essentially league average, right? Like. 908 to 910. Yeah, and I guess if, if you look at like the the fancier numbers is uh he did not do super well against the average, right? He was he was a negative goalie against the average. So, uh from that regard, um that's the thing, but that's also his first year in the league, right? 25 years old, first year really in the league, came over in the uh it was the Panarin deal, I want to say. Um, or no, yeah, the Panarin deal. He came with Brandon Saad. So, yep. um, yeah, I, I, I would gladly give him another chance. Well, they're, they're going to. Yeah. I think that's what this trade's about. I mean, Chicago got a pretty good piece going the other way. Yeah. Dehan, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up his numbers. I'll also pull up, uh, the old cap hit coming up here. Um, I have the cap hit ready. Okay, so what what is it? What is this oh, cap? Wait. <laughs> I don't because cap friendly so fast they've already moved it over. Well, so let's go over to Chicago. 
in, in mere seconds. But uh, Dahan played a lot of uh, pretty easy minutes for the Hurricanes last year. Um, and, you know, did well. He's, he's never been like an offensive defenseman, right? No. Um, yeah. And so when you're giving him, uh, you know, those easier minutes, it's kind of like, well, why have him on the team? So I get why they were willing to move him. Um, that said, uh, I, I definitely still think that he's a good defenseman and Chicago's a team in need of some of that after, uh, you know, Brent Seabrook being bad and, uh, some guys leaving. Yeah, so he's making four and a half is his cap hit for the next two years. That's Sorry, the next three years. Three years. Yeah, I mean, if, if he were to be on the free agent market right now, he'd get way more. 100%. I think that's a great deal for him for the next three years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like either team really won. You know, both teams got something that they can use. Yeah, it seems like a pretty fair trade. Um, I mean, I don't really love Olimata for Chicago, but they're like, so they've got Keith, DeHaan, and Mata on the left side, and then they've got Seabrook and Connor Mur- Murphy on the right side. Yeah. So they probably still need that coveted right hand D. Well, and if, if one of the uh, prospects that they decided to use as the reason to bypass Bowen Byram come up, right? Yep. Um, that, that fills that last slot. So true enough. I mean, I think it make it makes their decor competent again. Yeah. And, and if, if, uh, you know, this is assuming Corey Crawford's coming back as well, right? Like you need, yeah. you need him, um, back. So yeah. Interesting trade. It is an interesting one. It seems it, pretty it, fair. Yeah. It, it does seem like a, just a solid trade all around. Let's get to the other trades of the weekend. Some of the not fair ones. There are some that are less less fair than others. Uh, do you want to just do it in chronological order? Yeah, we might as well. All right. First up, Patrick Marlowe. Man, speaking of Carolina Hurricanes, Anton Forsberg and Patrick Marlowe. Everyone's favorite Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, but I think only one of them is going to wear the jersey. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that they missed the buyout window period. So... Is that correct that the window has currently closed? Well, now I'm doubting myself, but I believe there's also a second buyout window. There is a second buyout, but like it's a loophole. You have to have, I want to say it's like long-term injuries or something like that with the second buyout window. Uh, is that true? Yeah. There's, there's something with it. It's not just like a regular buyout window. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're going to... Okay, the buyout period begins the later of June fifteenth or forty eight hours after the Stanley Cup final. Okay, it, can, it concludes on the thirtieth, so they have until free on agency the 30th. to do it. Yeah, yeah. So who are we just talking about that I said no? They can't buy them out. Scott Darling. Oh yeah, so they still can buy Scott Darling out if they want to. Yeah, I mean that would just be just buy out their entire roster at this rate. But <laughs> so Patrick Marlowe and a first round draft pick. Head to the Toronto Maple Leafs for, I think, seven pucks is what came back the other way. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure seems like it. It's a, it's a high price to dump cap, to dump one season of cap, too. Yeah, so six and a quarter is what Patrick Marlowe's cap it is this year. Uh, and the Toronto Maple Leafs said, you know what? We'd rather give up a first, which, you know, this year... Their first round pick was late. Presumably, it'll be late next year. I mean, if it's not, then they really screwed up. Right? It's, so it's still bad. two years without a top 30 pick. Yeah. Well, I don't, did they ha- I don't think they had one last year either. Uh, did they not? Yeah, they did. Oh, maybe they didn't. We'll find out. I remember, but <laughs> we're running a real good show this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they did. They took Sandine last year. Yes, that's right. So it'll be two years in a row they don't have a first round pick. Yeah. Um, but that being said, there are windows now. And these are the sacrifices you make to take advantage of your open window. You know, like uh, this allows them to sign Mitch Marner and sign Kasperi Kapanen. Well, uh, Kapanen and Andreas Janssen both have. And Janssen. 
unofficial deals. They haven't been officially signed yet, but uh, yeah, now they can try to sign Mitchell Marner. Well, they should be able to fit him at this point. I think they said they have like 20 million. I think they have 20 million yeah. right now open. Yeah. Um, so they should be able to afford Marner now. So on the hole on the blue line though, on cap friendly, they still, they currently have 13 million on the books with 6.6 likely going to Marner and, or not Marner to Janssen and Kaepernick between the two of them. So that leaves them with a defenseman needs to be called up, signed something. Yeah. And you have about $7 million left to sign Marner. Unless they do actually move Nikita Zaitsev. Unless they can magically move Zaitsev, which would be fantastic. It seems um, like they are trying pretty hard. What is, and it, from the sounds of it, they could actually get something back for him. Yeah. Like a, it, they wouldn't have to send a first round pick with them like Marlowe. No, maybe they could just send Garrett Sparks with them or something. I mean, yeah, if you want more negative assets, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, so if they move Zaitsev, they're in good shape. If yeah, they I mean, don't, it's feeling a little tight. I mean, worst case scenario, someone else signs Marner and you get that first round pick back. True. And and now you get four of them. So, yeah, Is that even the worst case scenario? I don't even know. No, I honestly, if someone wants to sign Mitch Marner to this, like the ridiculous $11 million deal, do it and take the first round picks and just laugh the entire way. And give us the drama and the so, chaos. The one this weekend said the only team that they can think of that's stupid enough to do that is the Ottawa Senators. I I mean, would it surprise you, Carl? Could you no, it wouldn't, and that's what's bad. Could you imagine though, like after just dealing with trading your first round pick? and being a terrible team to do something that just, it seems like it's almost just like just to stick it to big brother. Yep. Just to cut off your foot, to whatever the saying is like the bigger question is to no, it's cut off your nose to spite your face. That's the one. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I started talking. I was like, no, no, gotta, <laughs> let's, let's pump the brakes correct on this. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the bigger question is, would Marner sign an offer sheet from Ottawa? Or would he be like, oh, you know what? I'll just take the $8 million back in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. They ha- you have, what, $7.5 million in cap space? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, you need an extra million for Janssen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, if he wants the money, it's there. But yeah. I so assume that it's happening. That's what's, hap- that's what's going on here. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, is it for Toronto? I guess it's worth it losing your draft pick to keep this core together. If if you can, if it helps you bring back Marner, sure. But as it stands right now, they still need to make another move to make this happen. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, Kadri's name's been out there too. Codgers is out there a ton. I mean, like if you move Connor Brown, that leaves you with about nine and a bit. Yeah. And then you roll with, you know, they've got, you could, you could use a uh, Kylie Rosen or Lilgren Sand and give them a shot at, as the sixth defenseman. Lots of options. Uh, I mean, in theory, some of these guys should be getting close to being ready. You can't just keep having the greatest AHL team ever. You need no. some of them have to play. Right? Some Bring of them have to play. Bracco and have him play. Yeah, he still hasn't played yet, has he? No. So, anyways, yeah, an interesting move. Great for Carolina, right? Fantastic move by them. Yeah, uh, using their cap space. More teams need to do that, right? Hundred like, percent. You can you can go out and you can spend six million dollars on a free agent, which is going to either get you a long term problem or you're going to like overpay for one year and then you got a guy for a year. But using the six and a quarter, even if you buy him out, even if you keep him, right? To do that, I had a, a conversation yesterday about that. 
you know, they haven't said, because he had to waive his no trade clause. He waived it. Mm -hmm. Um, They haven't said yes or no that he was like told that he would be uh, traded or or that Botto rather, right? Um, Uh, I don't know if he was told that, but I thought thought that was always the intention. It it does. it, It is the intention, but now Carolina has said that they will try to convince him to stay. And I'm like, like you don't have to convince him. He has to show up. There's <laughs> yeah. no convincing him. You currently own the rights to that player. He either shows up or he retires. Like those yeah, are those are his options. So, yeah, I guess so. I think hockey's too like the hockey circle is too quote unquote classy to pull a move like that though. You know, Marlo's a 20-year vet. He's been all around the league. They have respect for him. They want to respect his decisions, and it affects his family. Well, People don't do that in hockey. That conflict doesn't exist. Well, make a business decision, Carolina. I mean, at, at the very least, at least try to trade him to San Jose instead of buy him out and then let him go as a free agent. Oh, yeah. There's no way San Jose could afford to have a $6 million cap it for Marlo, though. They got to use that money for Pavelski. Well, then retain some of it. Yeah. Yeah, that works too. I don't know. At least get something, even if it's a late round pick. Yeah. Or, you know, or just buy him out. Either way, I just thought it was interesting that they had to try to convince him to stay. I'm like, you don't have to. Yeah, he's part of your team now. Yeah. Uh, Trade number two. A Carl got traded. Parnell Carl. Never even crossed my mind until right now. You've never thought, what does the K stand for in PK? No, I know what it stands for. It just, like, does he count as a Carl who plays in the NHL? Uh, he's a second-tier Carl, yeah. Like, it's spelled with a K, so that's already a knock against him. Um, it's not part of his official name that we call him. No, no, we do not. Um, but PK, off to New Jersey. Making New Jersey for uh, easily the winners of this weekend, I think. Yeah, this was the shock of the weekend. Because we, we heard rumors and rumblings that he would be moving to Toronto of all places, right? Yeah. Some, somehow Toronto was going to find a way to fit $9 million under the salary cap. And everyone, everyone was thinking that this was a great idea for Toronto. All of a sudden, he moves to, Nat, or to New Jersey, and then they're like, well, maybe that wasn't, maybe he's not good anymore. P.K. Subban is still a good NHL defenseman. How good is he, Carl? Because let's look at this return they got for him. Steven, sorry, go ahead. Tell us, Nick. You want me to tell you? Yeah. And? Jeremy Davies. You ever heard of him? Nope. No, me neither. Uh, Second round pick in 2019. So that was for Sunday. Yeah. And a second round pick in 2020. Okay. And Nashville, actually, they traded already that, that 2019 pick. They dealt. They moved down and uh, got a couple others out of it. So um, well, there you go. So Stantini ha- has NHL experience. He played 39 games for the Devils last year. A, a mediocre defenseman, right? Like he, he's a, a depth guy. He's not going to ever see your top pairing, but you know, as a, a a reasonable facsimile of a third pair D. Uh, Jeremy Davies, not excited about him. Who is it? He hasn't even played an NHL game, has he? No. Uh, he's, been, he's been playing in college. So 22 years old, was in college last year, hasn't yet to play in the NHL. And I usually like to think, in, in the same way, you know, I talk about Jeremy Bracco. Uh, if you're 22, 23 years old, and you have not even sniffed a game of the NHL, you might not be good. Yeah. You might not count as a prospect in a deal. You're just a player. You're a piece. It's nothing to get excited about. So you agree that this is a weird trade? It was a trade. Yeah, it was weird, especially now, right? We sit here today, and there are teams that are rumored to be handing Tyler Myers, of all people, eight years and seven or seven years, eight million dollars is the rumored amount that he's Whoa, talking about with Vancouver. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Like we live in a world where Tyler Myers might be getting eight million dollars. People are like, PK's overpaid at nine. PK is paid just fine at nine million dollars if Tyler Myers is getting eight. Hundred percent. 
Pika is making the right amount of money. He's probably the way it's going, making a little less than he's worth, actually. If he were to be a free agent right now, and there's only three more years left on that deal, like if PK were to go to the market right now and you were to say, hey, three years, nine million, every team would sign that. 100%. Yeah. Easily. So, so it's a good pickup for Jersey. Great pickup for New Jersey. They get themselves a first pair of defensemen. Uh, they get to add, you know, so they added Jack Hughes, they added PK Subban, they arguably added the two best players available this weekend. I, I'm not going to uh, try to slot undraft or recently drafted players who've never played in the NHL with an NHL veteran, but PK is still good. Like he had a down year this year, absolutely, which is why his value was lower, but Nashville got something for him. They're going to go out and be aggressive in free agency, which is a fantastic way to do things. Like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think their decor looks significantly worse without him. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So, like, I don't know if they even want to fill that gap, but I know they've got Dante Fabro in their system, who's probably eager to get going. But again, like, he hasn't played an NHL game. Yeah. So now they've got, you know, they're going to have to give Roman Yossi a deal next year. Uh, they've got still got Ryan Ellis at a fantastic price. Like, yeah, that's a steal of a deal right there. Big time. Um, then Matias at home. Now they'll have uh, Stantini. Likely he'll he'll slide in on this roster. Um, Ham Hughes potentially in there as, somewhere as well. So they've got you know their decor is still set. Uh, they've got thirteen million dollars in cap space though. What they like locked down roster. Pretty much everyone is back who needs to get a deal. So uh, they can be aggressive. You know who's going to sign for less than thirteen million dollars? Uh, everyone except Mitch Marner. Yeah. More specifically, I was thinking of Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne. Yeah. That's the the piece that they're targeting, which I, I enjoy the fact that he will have been in the trade that involved Nashville was traded. Technically. Could we say that he was traded for Kyle Turris? He was traded to Nashville and then he was traded to Ottawa for Kyle Turris. Yeah. That's how okay. that works. Yeah. So now he'll be with Turris in Nashville. So that's good. Assuming he signs there. Yeah. And, it, you know, he's a guy, when you think of, like, players who would love to be in Nashville, if there's anyone who would rather leave Ottawa, you know, he's, he's an Ontario uh, person, but he's a big country music fan. He is. I just think, I, like, I do wonder what their contract ceiling is going to be for him. Because they're pretty tough negotiators. They don't dish out tons of money on contracts. No, but you, you have to think that they'd be willing to go at least, like Ryan Johansson, $8 million Yeah, more or six. less than that. I would say that they'd be willing to go above that, and that's enough to get it done. I would like, think so. Yeah, I mean, you, even if you just literally spend the $9 million from PK on Duchesne, that, I feel Fair like enough. 9 by 7 I mean, that's what Duchesne's looking for. So if they're yeah. willing to do it, then it's a match uh, made in heaven. There you go. And our, our third, I guess, uh, fourth now, thanks to Calvin DeHaan moving, JT Miller off to the Canucks. So my initial thoughts on this was I like JT Miller for the Canucks. Like, I think he, it's a good acquisition for them. Yeah, I like JT Miller for a lot of teams. I'm a big JT Miller fan. Yeah, he's good for what, like 50 points? What did he get uh, last year? 47 points, but generally, you know, 43, 56, 58. You know, 50 points. If he can put up 20 goals, like the Canucks have only had three players last year who were over 50 points. Yeah, and for a, for a five and a quarter million dollar player, that's great. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a good deal. I saw people ripping it online because they had to include a third round and a first round pick in there. But I, I don't mind it, especially with the condition on the first that if they don't make the playoffs this season, then it gets bumped to 2021. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, both both picks we saw because Toronto's is also, uh, it's top 10 protected. Um, yeah, but which is essentially the same thing as this Canucks pick. Um, you know, you make it so that you, you can, you're giving a, a lower pick and they added a great player in JT Miller. 
Uh, I would I would gladly trade a first round pick for him to have him on the Avalanche. Yeah, yeah, I I like the deal, but it's very clear that the Canucks think they are very close to being playoff ready. Yeah, and they're probably wrong, but that's. Uh, uh, I that's mean, maybe it kind of depends on how big of a step some of these young guys take. You know, I mean, yeah, they've got something special in Pedersen. They do. Calder winner. He's going to score big goals. Jake Vertanen's going to be a good player. They've just got a couple of contracts they need to get rid of and also some that they need to not sign like Alex Edler. You don't make Alex Edler the highest paid player on your team. They can't. You don't, you don't do that. You know, they, they somehow, I mean, they can get by with them. Louis Erickson only has three years left. Uh, they've got th- $13 million in cap space and lots of room. Uh, you know, this year they really only have to sign. Uh, you know, Brock Besser needs a deal. Um, Marcus Granlin needs a deal, but that Granlin deal will be smaller. Uh, and apparently they're paying Tyler Myers $8 million. So, Yeah, and they should also not trade for Milan Lucic. Yeah, and they should also not give Tyler Myers $8 million. Yeah. Um, yeah two good points, Carl. We... We've rallied. We know what we're doing now. Um, any other any other thoughts from draft weekend? I know we're, we're, we're going to get to... Uh, we knew there was a lot to talk about today. And then there was a trade that happened. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the rules. Any other thoughts on like the transactions of the weekend? No, I mean, I'm glad they made it exciting a little bit on Saturday. I agree. Friday lacked excitement and it went on for way too long. Uh, very hard for a casual fan to enjoy it, but I'm glad we got a little bit of excitement on Saturday with some big trades or big yeah, was, names being traded. Yeah, it was nice to wake up uh, in the morning. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, NHL, we saw issue after issue with penalties and officiating in the off season or in the playoffs. The NHL said we got to fix this, and so they tried to. They set out. And uh, they announced a number of rule changes coming up. And at first glance, I cringe greatly. Why is that? Because the very first thing in this quote, and it's not necessarily the first thing he said, but in this first quote, he said, Gary Batman, the increased use of video replay is something that we've considered and discussed over time. And at this point in time, we think it was the appropriate response to what we're seeing coupled with what we believe is our ability to do it. So that's what we're getting. We're getting more review. So if you hate video review, if you think it slows down the game, if you think it's unnecessary, we're sorry. But what kind of reviews are we talking about? Like, are we talking about the refs go to the bench and the coaches challenge and tell them what play they want reviewed? So here's, here's the biggest change that's happening. Okay. Coaches can challenge plays that involves pucks that hit the net. So puck over glass can be reviewed. Uh, pucks that are high sticked and that have gone out of play and hand passes. So literally they're like, hey, what is what are all the things we messed up this playoffs? Let's <laughs> review those. Let's just make those reviewable. But the onus is on the coaches to challenge it. Correct. Yeah. Those are all coaches challengeable plays. See, that's the bad part in my opinion. Because like, how much more time is going to be wasted on coaches looking down at the screens at their feet and re- looking at iPads trying to figure out if the play should be reviewed? Like, I'm I'm fine with video reviews, but it needs to happen live as the play is happening by a referee in Toronto or upstairs in the arena or something, so they can immediately call down and get the call right. So here's one way that I think that they're they're working to eliminate it. So blatant things. You do this, any coach's challenge, does not matter the type, uh, any coach's challenge that fails, two-minute penalty. Goalie interference too? Yeah, so any of the uh, the goalie interference or uh, what's the other thing that you could review right now? Offsides. Um, offsides, uh, any of them, you review it under coach's challenge, uh, delay a game. But it's but that still doesn't erase the amount of time coaches are going to review a play behind the bench while the ref waits to drop the puck to see oh are they going to review it or not? Well, the the refs should just because there's there is in the rules a thing about how long it takes between whistles. 
So the refs just drop it. If- I feel like when I'm watching hockey, there's a lot of time spent while the ref goes from bench to bench trying to figure out if this coach wants to challenge a play or not. I could be wrong, but... And, and, and there is. I just think that they should skip that. Just, you're not allowed that anymore. I agree. Yeah. You got to make a call. And if you do it twice in a game, double minor penalty. Oh. So, so you don't lose your challenge if you get it wrong. No, you get unlimited now. But every time you're wrong. So like, because what they want is they're like, well, if the refs continue to suck, we want the coaches to be able to fix it. And we don't want them penalized for it. But if we'll give you as much rope to hang yourself as you want. Hmm. Hmm. Tell so, me, tell me why I should like this. Uh, because on a blatant call that everyone knows is wrong, they will get it right. Okay. And why should I hate it? Because there's going to be more reviews or there's more potential for reviews and there's more, should they, shouldn't they have reviewed this? Now there's going to be, you, you have to hope they have, they didn't ask you have to hope that they invest in some better technology to make this happen. Yeah. I mean, that's the part of it. We don't know yet. Yeah. Um, so we hope for that. Um, so you should, you should hate it because the will they, won't they questioning. I want to focus on what's on the ice and what's happening. I don't want to be thinking, Oh, should they have reviewed that? Just, just play the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like it more than I hate it. Like, at least they'll be getting the calls right, but they're still going to need to be prompted by the team that is a victim to the rule breaking. They're still going to need that team to say, like, hey, are you sure you got it right? And if that team doesn't feel like doing that, then the wrong call is still made. Yeah. Uh, uh, They should just have a ref upstairs who watches the video. Well, that's the thing, right? Because they... It, final minute of uh, of regulation and overtime, uh, Toronto will be initiating all those reviews. So they should just do that all the time. Yeah, why not just have that for the whole game? Yeah, that's that's the solution. <sighs> they probably just don't want to pay for another employee to be working. Yeah, the NHL on their... Uh... Or maybe they have a deal with, with Apple to get all these tiny iPads that the refs have to use. I mean, they should because Apple lost out to the NFL. NFL's got uh, Microsoft Surfaces on the field. Oh, so good for Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, winning one for once. Microsoft's doing well for themselves, Nick. Look, it's not. It's not like the little <laughs> Nick. Like, don't think about like the BlackBerry tablets out there. I think, I think Microsoft's doing okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, any other interesting rule changes? That was the big one. Uh, we finally got a salary cap. That's a thing that happened. Yeah. Feels like it's pretty late into the game to get a salary cap. Like, you... Yeah, teams are signing players. Like, you should have a salary cap the day after the finals end. Yeah. Teams should know what they're dealing with. Yeah, I agree. And then, especially when they're like, well, you should operate it. Like, assume the salary cap's going to be around this number. Yeah, and then it comes in like two million less. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, I mean, it's interesting because you you still have a number. Of, there are currently one, two, three, six teams under the salary cap or under the the floor. So that's a fun thing. Um, yeah, my Avalanche are fourteen million under the floor. In case you're the Avalanche are fourteen million under the floor. Under the floor. So what you, are they missing? That's crazy. Rantanen. Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about him. Rantanen gets a deal. Kerfa gets a deal. Comfort gets a deal. Zadorov gets a deal. Panarin gets a deal. <laughs> Should have thrown that one right in the middle and just, <laughs> <laughs> just snuck it in you. Yeah. Just Panarin? Yeah. Uh, so 81.5 million is going to be the upper limit. 81.5 is the limit for salaries this year. And yeah, lower than what they originally thought it would be. And then NHL GMs lost their minds. Do you like the hard cap, Carl? I would be very in favor of a, of a luxury tax. You would, eh? Yeah, soften up this cap a little. I don't know enough how, how the luxury tax works and how it really affects teams' as rosters. In the, the NBA has it, right? 
like I just I don't understand it well enough to know the difference that well. But this this hard cap starting to get real frustrating. Yeah, the NHL is currently uh, the N- NFL has a hard cap, but they also don't have guaranteed deals. NHL is the only league with guaranteed contracts and a hard cap in North America. And so uh, Major League Baseball and the NBA have luxury taxes. And almost every team in the NBA is over the cap. Yeah. Like the salary cap does, is uh, irrelevant. Um, but, and the way that it's supposed to work is that the bottom teams get the tax dollars from the top teams. So, sure, you know, Toronto's got big pockets, right? Yeah. We know MLSE is not, not struggling in the slightest. Yeah. So they go and it's teams that, and, and you can, you know, you can determine it based off of amount spent. It's a dangerous game to play though. Um, or based on revenue, right? So you distribute that to the lowest revenue teams in the league and you get that money back. Um, so that's kind of the premise behind a sal- a luxury tax. But it does, or it would remove some of the parity that the NHL has created in the hard cap system, right? Uh, sort of. Because it is. is it, the parity right now in the NHL is ridiculous. Like anyone could win. Yeah, literally. That's, that's why the Toronto Maple Leafs have to be like, look, let's top 10 protect this pick because we don't know what's happening next year. Right. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't though. Like the NBA is a different story because it takes like two players to win. Right. And the Warriors have three of those players you need to win. Um, so from that regard, like it's, it's different, but, um, I don't think like baseball, it does, it hasn't, uh, really done that. You see a number of teams cycling through and the big guys, like the Cubs had a number of down years and, then they made a run, but it was literally based on player development. The Astros are a great team right now because they were trash for five years and made great picks and developed yeah. them well. So yeah. um, I think baseball is a an example of it working that can create an amount of parity. There's, there's still, you know, year to year, you know, the teams that are going to be good and they continue to be good, but uh, it cycles through as it should. Interesting. It's it's very it's fascinating to me. My only concern with if they started looking at this is that it would have to be agreed on through CBA, CBA negotiations. And every time they do CBA negotiations, they stop playing hockey for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, and I'd be very, very interested to know where the owners sit on the luxury tax, because I that would not be something that would be a uh, something that I think all of them would be on, in favor of. The the big money teams are in favor of it. Um, I'd be curious how some of the other ones are. Yeah, probably not great. They probably don't love it. But, yeah, that could be... Uh, I, I would be very in favor of a, a luxury tax because like you said, it, it, can, it can just adds a little bit more, right? If you want to spend all that money and it... Do it, but... <laughs> But but didn't you say that if the if the luxury tax is paid, some of that money then goes to the lower revenue teams? Yes. So can they not then use that money to pay luxury tax? <laughs> you could, yeah. Or to just spend to the cap. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It'll be it'll be I'm curious how it all shakes out. Very interesting. Well, eighty one and a half is the magic number this year. Yep. And, you know, free agency is, what, six days away now? Seven days away? Seven days away. Next Monday, Canada Day. So we will see how teams decide to spend that $81 million or whatever percentage of it they have remaining right now. Yeah, whether it be 40, 40 odd million, 35 million like the Avalanche, or negative 3 million like the Golden Knights. Yeah, because they just had a big signing this week, too. Yeah, that's right. William Carlson. I, yeah. I like that signing for them. You know what? I do too. Yeah. It, it's kind of like he's only done it for two seasons and they signed like a show me deal last year. He was like, yeah, I can put up 24 goals. And they're like, okay, fine. We'll pay you for that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that deal. I mean, obviously it's going to force them. They're going to have to make other moves. 
for sure. Yeah. And so, and there's talk Stastny's names around a bunch for some reason patches. Yeah, I saw patch ready. Hmm. What? It'll be an interesting one to watch. From for some reason, Avalanche fans are like very in favor of bringing Stastny back to town. I was gonna say, wasn't he an Avalanche already? Yeah. Apparently, they want him back. I mean, I would love to find a way to get another center on this team, so that'd be all right. Um, anything else this week? Anything else? I feel like we've been talking for an hour and a half. Yeah, it it has been a while. That's why you know if the the awards were the awards. There wasn't anything of you know the most noteworthy things. Uh, Connor McDavid wore a skate lace as a belt. <laughs> and- I, I, I like I loved the Robin Laner speech. That was great. That, I that's did literally the two takeaways from it. And Austin Matthews on NHL 20. You got all you need to know. Oh, yeah, they're cursed now. It's over. I mean, well, the last cover athlete was traded to New Jersey. So true. New Jersey. The PK curse. Welcome to New Jersey, Austin Matthews. Yep. Yeah, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll be there. You know, we'll, we'll we still need to decide how we're going to handle because free agency is a very busy day, um, but a lot of tr- signings trickle in on day two as well. So uh, we'll see what we get up to for free agency day. That's going to be Monday, July first. Lots happening this week. Lots of rumors. Make sure you follow. Uh, check for that check mark when you're retweeting things this week. Oh God, please check for the check mark. Do. I do not want to see Bub McKenzie get retweeted this week. No, please. If one of you wish to create a Bub McKenzie Twitter account and just tweet directly at us all of your rumors, we would. I'd be in favor of that, though. <laughs> You'd hit that RT button so fast. I would, I'd, I'd quote tweet them all with my thoughts <laughs> on it. Yeah. Um, as Bub said. As, yeah. Um, but lots of happen this week. Uh, we will see there, there'll be some more signings, maybe some RFA guys uh, signed once they actually talk to some other teams uh, when they're allowed to not like the illegal talking that happens already. So mm-hmm. um, thanks for tuning in. Find us. Uh, if you want to hit us up with a review for the show, that'd be great. You can find us on Twitter at fourth line podcast, facebook.com slash the fourth line podcast, the fourth line podcast.com. Um, check out, we got a new series on the website for writing actually, Nick. Um, oh, where we're talking about jerseys. Jerseys are happening. Uh, and so Chandler, still new writer with the websites, uh, diving in. He started with the uh, the LA Kings burger jersey the, uh, from 95-96. Like, like King reviewing jersey. them? Yeah, you were, were just, just cycling back to good, great, terrible jerseys. Of that them. was a bad jersey. That was a bad one. So that's uh, he started strong by looking at that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking for other things like tickets, Nick, if you're looking for tickets to a concert, you know, lots of summer festivals coming up, lots of summer festivals, lots of things like that, head to Seat Giant, SeatGiant.ca. Use promo code APN and save 5% off that ticket. I know, I know you should have been doing it with the Raptors. We talked about that, but uh, head on over there and uh, just make your summer a little bit more affordable. You know, maybe you can go for dinner now before that show. I like dinner. I love dinner. Dinner is one of my favorite things. So I'm going to go eat it right now. That sounds great. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week for free agency. It's time for us to wrap up another fourth line show. I know what you're thinking. You don't want us to go. It's time to start the off season and we'll be here talking every Monday for no reason. 